Thank you very much. I will talk about um, how we are working with quality and sustainability, but first I will make a remark that sustainability and quality performance is uh, part of our daily work, what we're doing, whatever we do with the environment. It can be producing new machinery, developing new processes, or when we are fine-tuning processes. I will give a few examples of what we have done during the past years, and then give, in our view, what can be the state of the art mill and how that will look like, or how it looks like today. As you all know, it started in the wood handling to perform a uniform ship quality with the tailor making for the purposes for the purposes on the later process. That is one of the key things that we have to do. We. Within our wood handling system, we can now today produce a quality that is so uniform that we don't need any ship screening, meaning that we are avoiding losses and we are also avoiding the power consumption in that area, which is a benefit. This is another example of what we have developing during the last time. And here you can see that we are working and utilizing across the whole Valmet organization. We are utilizing our technology knowledge within pulp and also combining with fiber and then utilizing the automation part. Start with the cooking where we have a very homogeneous impregnation, which means that we have an even quality out of that or with improved fiber quality and a very strong pulp. We are adding on our refining approach where we are doing uh, splitting the refining in the fiber line and in the stock pre preparation for the bore machines, which are tailor making and the, the fibers for the end product that they are producing. And in the end, based on those fibers, we are producing a, a, a product that the, the customer would like to have. With this system, we have proven that we, we can supply a very strong pulp, which is a, optimal for, for the customer to produce this. We have shown in different cases where with our strong pulp, a very strong board can be produced. And as you see to the right hand side of the slide, we can utilizing that strong pulp in three different ways. We can produce a very much stronger pulp. We can lower the basis weight with preserve, preserving the strength from the beginning, or we can produce a lower cost basis fiber by mixing in lower cases. So in that way, we are creating an opportunity for our customer. This is two other examples where we show where we have how to minimize the chemical consumptions. To the left hand side, you see what the fiber line, where we have in the new cooking G3 generation, we have done the measures in the cooking by introducing additional washing stages, adding some cooking zones, so we in a more, more way can control and optimize the cooking conditions, which means that we have a more uniform, more bleachability pulp coming out of that one. And later on, we can even more optimize the, the fiber production within the fiber line, the oxygen liquefaction, and the bleach plant. And in the, in the over, overall picture, this means that we will have a lower emissions and lower chemical consumptions. To the right-hand side of the picture, you see that we are having a sulfuric acid plant, and this is producing internally produced sulfuric acid based on the smelly gases inside the mill. Uh, sulfur excess has been a problem during the last decades, and that has, problem has been that you need to dump a lot of ash from the recovery boiler to control the chemical balance. The drawback has been that we are emitting some chemicals to the recipient, and we're also losing makeup chemicals, so we need to purchase more chemicals. With this sulfuric acid plant producing internal sulfuric acid, we can both minimize the cost and also minimizing the, the emissions, and which is very important, especially for inland mills where water discharge is uh, critical in many ways. With Valmet, we have a very ambitious climate program where we are going to, to minimize the, our own operation, of course, but also look into the supply chains and trying to minimize or will reduce the carbon footprint. Uh, however, the big contribution for us is when we are utilizing the, our technology to, to be utilized by the customer, and that's where, where we are going to make the big, biggest difference. As you see, we have a target to reduce the energy consumption with 20% during the last decade. Energy consumption in general is not really done in big steps. 
It's a sum of all the small things that we do within the developing new products. It can be water savings, air preheating in different stages in a more efficient way, utilizing of the frequency drives, installation of and use of a more advanced control system to have a very much more optimized control system of the different processes. Um, Traditionally, we have been working department by department, but I think that if we start to integrate in between the departments all over the mill, we are even having more opportunities to find more energy reductions in the future. As you see on the picture, this hot black liquor that we are in Östrand, this is one example of the integration between the cooking plant and the evaporation plant. Uh, this is an example of also technology that was state-of-the-art and very new for a couple of years ago and today it's a standard solution that we offer in I would say m most of our, our cases worldwide and it also comes now into upgrades and rebuilds. This is um, another example how fast the developing actually is going. Fossil kiln has been the last utilis or the last consumer of fossil fuels uh, it can be either heavy fuel oil or natural gas, and that has been for many, many years. But during the four or five last years, it has been an explosion of replacing fuel oil and natural gas with different kind of biomaterial. There are two different types. You can either gasify the, the biomass and utilizing that product gas replacing the biofuel or the, the natural gas, or you can direct fire the, the wood powder in. In, in the kiln. Both of them are replacing it, the, the fossil fuel fully. Uh, again, this was a new technology for a couple of years ago and today it's a standard solution that we are offering worldwide for all the bigger kilns and it starts to be also asked for, for replacements. One key thing here that you need to keep in mind and it's based on our experience since we have delivered very many of these plants during the last year is that you also need to look into not only the gasification and um, the lime kilns, but also looking for the whole white liquor plant because what you put in into this gasification and kiln will have an impact on uh, other departments as well. Finally, I would like to, to say that a state-of-the-art pulp mill today is a very green operation. We will have a fully supporting the mill operation without use, utilizing of any fuel oil at all. All the energy that we need for steam generation and for power generation is uh, done in the recover boiler based on the black liquor. This is done for both softwood mills and hardwood mills. We are exporting a lot of this energy excess as electrical power in most of the cases. It can be 150, 120% of your own um, consumption. And that energy excess is the basis also for the future possibility to put in or to produce new revenue streams. Um, you see here on the screen that we are now down to about 500 kilowatt hour per ton in electrical uh, consumption. And um, the heat consumption, meaning the steam, is about nine. If you compare those numbers from 10 to 15 years back, they were about 15 to 20 percent higher for a state of the art mill. And that is the reason why I think our target about 20 percent reduction in 20 years is very realistic and we are looking forward to support doing, developing all these processes and for you to utilizing it. Thank you very much.